Hey guys, welcome back. I am going to be doing the detail work now on this night and a few of the details that I want to start with are the uh, teeth area, the main area, and the lips around the teeth um, and, and possibly uh, we'll go ahead and, and um, start using the big sanding disc as well to shape down these flats along the body of the night into their final shape. So that's what's happening now. To do the teeth, I'm attaching this small, thin disc cutter. And it's going to come in and make a nice line all the way around. Uh, the underside of the lip where I need to separate the teeth. So I'm just tightening that on to my Dremel tool and I'm going to draw the position for those teeth. You can see I'm just creating a stopping place really that starts at the top of this circle and goes forward towards the muzzle. Okay. So I'm actually going to do this upside down. Normally when I'm holding this, I'd be holding it this way and doing it from this side. But here, I'll be doing it from the top. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to move my light. I'm going to come in and just start by making a straight line the same on the front I'm separating the teeth from the upper lip. Okay. So that's the beginning of the teeth. <clears throat> For the ears, we can actually uh, do a little bit of detail work. Just a little bit so you start to imply where they're at. So you can see possibly here how I've just put a little slit in the ear. And that's actually done, you can do that with this tool, by angling down like this into where you wanna where you wanna cut. So the slit's gonna basically it look like that as it goes in there. to define a little bit of the ear. Do the same on this side. Starting from the point, coming about halfway down. definition there. Now for the main, you can use the same tool and just make cross hatches basically uh, as I've done on this night. And marking those out, you know, is an important thing to do. 
beforehand just so you don't go too crazy with the Dremel tool and, and totally miss something. But one thing that you don't want to do is uh, get all those cut in and then have to come back and cut the top uh, with your knife. So I'm going to actually look at this knife and go ahead and plan to shave off a little bit more before I start cutting the notches for the hair. Good. So that's starting to look more, more like what it should here. <clears throat> and now for marking, just come in and try to make these spots about as even as I possibly can. And I make them about an eighth of an inch apart. Sometimes actually a little bit more, especially around these curving areas. Because when you're curving and you're coming in with a straight blade, you create a pie cut effect. So now I'm going to come in and make some of these cuts. because it's at the uh, most curved spot. I'm going to go ahead and make a cut with a different saw. And then I can start making cuts back up this way. come back in and widen these but I just I want to make sure that they get fairly straight there we go. And come in where I want them to switch out for a sanding disc and uh, I'm going to start shaping this body and uh, smoothing out some of these areas with the sanding disc. Oh, well actually before I do that I can actually do this.
cleaning it up a little bit. Trying to balance it out, even it out. There we go. So now for the sanding disc. So for the sanding discs, there's this little attachment for rotary tools and Dremel tools. And uh, I have a coarse disc on there currently, but you can use a lighter uh, disc like one of these ones that I have in my hand. I'll switch out to one of these uh, finer grade grit discs a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to start shaping these curves and concaves. So I like to turn the tool kind of this way, since it's round on this bottom side, uh, it'll create a good concave surface. And I just move it back and forth, and I work it up the length of the neck, and I try to straighten out these lines. generally round over this sharp edge. Now here's the fun part, getting right up in close and cleaning up right alongside the main. I'm going to go right up the middle of that flat spot, of each flat spot, and make a nice deep curve. Now that I have things kind of evened out a little bit. And that deep curve uh, is going to then be sanded smooth with the higher grit a sanding wheel. All right, a little bit of work on the face, I think, is going to be done. Yeah. 
A little bit here under the under the chin. I'm going to need to bring the front of this up a little bit like that. You can see how this comes up a fair amount. So I'm going to go ahead and start here and just go back and forth. Um, I'm going to go back and forth right across here. Yeah, with my knife, I'm just gonna, gonna continue on this line, smooth out the transition into the neck. Seems like I need to take off a fair amount right here. I'm looking at the balance between the left and the right side of the, the neck and the mane. This seems a little disproportionate. It's a nice deep cut there. It's not quite as deep here, so. Just gonna come in and deepen it a little bit. All right, that's a bit of cleanup. Now we're going to switch to the next wheel. Continuing with the detailing of this night. I'm going to need to mark the spots for the eyes, taper down around the muzzle and out towards the lips, and also shape down the cheek area a little better under here, out there, just to kind of get it to a finished shape so that it can just be finished sanded. We're also going to need to do the nostrils. Um, So let's get started on the eyes. The first thing about the eyes is that we're not going to do all the carving with the simple pocket knife from here on out, as well with the rest of the detailed carving. If you really want to do a good job of detailed carving um, on anything, not just at night, getting some more specific tools is going to be helpful. Now you can do it with a knife, I'm not saying that you can't, and I'll upload a video at some point showing my technique for carving eyes with a pocket knife, um, different different carving techniques I have for the simple, simple pocket knife, but for this specific piece we're going for this kind of look and to get perfectly round eyes set back in the sockets um, with good bulge if you will on the eyeballs uh, around the sockets perfectly even centered you know balanced on the head all this kind of stuff there's just an easier way to do it so I'm going to show you what that is so here 
chucked inside of my little cheap hand drill, I have this tool. This is actually a punch replacement head for a multi-sized leather punch. Uh, they, they make a leather punch that looks like a big pair of pliers with basically a spool or, or a wheel on one end with little spots where you can thread these punches in. Um, and this, this just came from, I'll, upload, I'll show a picture, this came from a set that I bought for like four bucks. And uh, because they come so cheaply and they come in lots of different sizes, you can actually get one of these punches and chuck it inside of a drill, just like I've done. And then you use it as a very tiny hole saw, pretty much, or um, plug cutter. And you can go in and you can push straight back into the head and cut the exact uh, size circle that you absolutely need for the application. So all of our carving here around the face has been done to set up the eye socket area so that it's really easy to just come in here and, and locate where we want it to be and then copy that on the other side. Everything's always been carved left and right of the face to be balanced. Anyway, enough talking. I'm going to show you how I do it. If your hole punch that you find, like for instance, I found these at a hobby store in the leather section. If the hole punch that you find isn't quite sharp enough, you can always chuck it in the drill and run it over a uh, sharpening stone like I have done actually to just hone the edge to a nice sharp point all the way around the circle. So. What I'm doing is I'm looking down the ridge of the nose and right here where it curves back up and saying that right there is going to be the top of the eye socket and the ridge of the nose is going to be the side of the eye socket. So I want to come in where those two places meet and make sure that my circle just barely fits inside both of those locations. And if I can do that, I'll flip it here so it's easier for me to actually do, and I'll show you. If I can do that, and I've accomplished my placement. So before I actually start turning this, I'm going to just rock back and forth. And that kind of places it, and I can look at it and say, yep, that's what I want makes a little mark there. Set it back in my mark and then angle it right back into the head. Voila. See if I can give you a better look at it. So there's my eye socket. So I'm just going to copy that same idea on this side. The ridge of the nose, and then the curve of that eye bulge. So there it is. Same idea on both sides. The next step is to carve alongside the muzzle and create a scooped out section right in front of the eye. And I like to use a very small gouge for this. This gouge is maybe a quarter of an inch wide, and so it's a quarter inch diameter circle, if you will, to that gouge. And I'm going to start really close 
to the eye socket right in this sloped area right before the ridge of the nose just scoop right up into that be careful don't go all the way through because you'll totally take that eye out just wiggle it up and stop it right at your cut and we're just going to deepen that this could be done with a knife by coming in from two angles, two directions so I could take my knife and I could come in from up here and just slice straight down and come in under here and slice up to that making a V cut but it's just quicker when you have a simple tool and this isn't a very expensive tool this is a, a dockyard model um, yeah, this is just a real simple micro-carving tool from a cheap set. So I'm going to bring this scoop all the way up here. Move down. Come under the eye, try to carry it down a little bit. Okay, we'll do the same on this side. And I'm doing this on the lathe, the detail part, just so that it holds steady and you can see it in camera. But normally I would do this, you know, in my hand. It would just be so much easier to just go alongside left and right left and right of the face and just but these are the things I do for you guys starting in here having to carve backwards very gently coming up to the cut of the eye created by my hole cutter plug cutter Very careful. You can see how well that defines the ridge of the nose. about even. Straighten them up a little bit here. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is kind of come in from behind and create the relief to the eye so that the eye socket seems to wrap around the eyeball. So I'm actually going to come in kind of from this angle and carve up to the eye and it'll be a pretty sharp angle that I'm at get the light around where it's easier to see there we go so I'm actually going to start with a pretty serious cut right here straight in almost taking a little chip out so that's the small chip it creates a relief direction and then I just want to, that to follow its way out here I'm actually going to come this way. I'm 
kind of do that. It's a little relief cut going up to the eye. Cut a little deeper. And do the same thing over here. Cut in. This way. Yeah. So that gives us a little bit of shape. Now I'm actually going to want to take a knife and go right up tight to the eyeball and cut in to make a triangular cut or like a pyramid cut very small way up in there close to the base of the eyeball the reason I want to do that is I want there to be plenty of room right underneath it to give a good shadow around the front of the eye because that's where the, the kind of the crease um, of the upper and lower lids come together and there's always a little bit of a, of a shadow there it seems um, so I'm just kind of making it a straight cut back up in there and that relieves a little bit more from right underneath the eyeball same thing on the other side we'll come straight in here very pointed and just kind of make a cut straight across and a cut straight down and then cut back here and kind of try to take that little chip out There it goes. Okay. That helps the eyes bulge out a little bit further too. Alright. Good. So we've got the left and the right eye socket created from the front. Now we're going to trim the eyes a little bit. I'm going to kind of relieve some of these sharp corners. All right. I'm going to switch up to an X-Acto knife. And this is not a great carving knife, but it's good for what we're about to do. We need a very thin blade to get up in and around these eyeballs that we created with our uh, little plug cutting setup with those circles. So this, this X-Acto blade is perfect for that. First thing I'm going to do is create some downward cuts to the lower part of the eye. I'm going to cut down and in and just little stop motions like that. I'm going to cut down and in and just create the round to the underside of the eye and I'm going to cut kind of up and into the eye socket here trying not to slice through the eyebrow like it's really easy to go through the eyebrows up top like that so just be very cautious don't be afraid to take a lot out of the eyeball in order to save the, the eyebrow because and those little eyebrows just chip so easily. The socket up there. Okay, now I'm going to cut back this way. Trim the front. And come straight across to make the front of the eyeball. And then start rounding back around the front. Trim the top back. Go. 
Now, do not pay attention to the technique I'm using with this X-Acto knife. If I were holding this just in my hand, I would be just doing it, you know, kind of with normal carving, normal carving technique. I'd be up here like this, but like I said, I'm holding it here in the lathe so that it's easier to film. I don't have a <clears throat> uh, carving vice currently. I'll be getting one at some point, I'm sure. So the chuck of the lathe is kind of my carving vice for this. Okay. So we're getting there. Now I'm just going to come along and try to, to widen the gap between the eyeball and the circle that we cut so that the eyeball tucks in underneath the circle and creates the illusion of that eyelid all the way around. So I'm just barely trimming off a little bit around the sides. Here we go. Around over some of these sharp edges because the sharp edges will want to split if I slip with my knife or whatever. Okay. So there's one eyeball rounded. Do the same thing to the other eyeball. Start with some downward cuts. Some upward cuts. Very careful not to nick into the eyebrow. So whenever you get the eyeball kind of to the position you, you want it with this technique, um, it's then good to come back with uh, the hole cutter, the plug cutter, uh, because there's going to be little fuzzies inside those sockets. It's good to come back and just run it in and out one more time just to clean everything yep helps to find the eye there's that and besides a little bit of extra shaping that's pretty much it for defining the ridge of the nose and creating the eye sockets so now I'm going to shape the muzzle a little bit more and put the nostrils in So for the muzzle, what I want to do is come in and take a little notch out of there and a little notch out of there. And that'll help shape the sides of the muzzle. It'll create a channel that kind of runs back up this way, which will also help define the lip area on both sides. So that can be done with a knife, um, but again I'm going to use this little tool, this little gouge, and I'm going to start with that. We're going to wrap right around the front and just push. 
trying to leave about a sixteenth of an inch of flat area right right around the lip which you can see right there I'm actually going to carry that back a pretty good ways um, almost level with the eye at least I want to carry it past the mouth just slightly and I want the front part of it to kind of be angled at not quite a 45 degree angle but I want it to kind of imply shape that continues so you want an angle that gives you a narrow point at the front of the muzzle and widens out so that's just to kinda get it started over there likewise I'm gonna do that over here leaving about a sixteenth of an inch right along this area uh, so that there's an implied lip area I'm just gonna carve back now this may look scary to you as far as carving technique goes there's almost no way for me to hurt myself unless I really just do something stupid so okay now I need to create two flat areas left and right of center and these are going to kind of be bunny ear shaped flat areas and that's just for this style of nostril that I'm doing for these nights I don't know a lot of, about horse anatomy so if I'm getting this wrong then chalk it up to stylistic uh, differences this is definitely a stylized knight it's not a it's not an anatomically correct horse so So that's going to be kind of where the nostrils hang out. And I'm just going to create a couple flat spots there so that I have the angles that I would like. So there's one. Taper the nose down towards that scallop that I made. I'll do likewise on this side. I'm going to taper it down a little bit. If you've ever seen uh, a horse's nostrils, like, and by nostril I mean the whole tube that runs towards their nose whenever they're breathing hard, it's, it's massive, it's crazy. And that's what we're kind of defining here, coming underneath the eye, is this entire tube that then comes up to the nostrils, which flare out. Likewise here. And there's also a tube that we're going to define around the eye socket area. Um, because the eye is very much held within a tube of uh, muscles and they all seem to come up to the eye across the forehead from behind it at least that's how it appears to me Okay, now we're going to start defining the nostrils themselves. And here's 
here's kind of my center line. And for the nostrils, you can do several different things. Um, you can use like a sanding disc like this on a Dremel tool. And that works pretty well for just getting a basic shape. You can use a cutter like this, also on a Dremel tool, to come in and make your cut and then uh, kind of scoop in and scoop out, um, which also works pretty well. You can use rounded cutters. You can, there's a lot of different things you could use, grinding stones and wheels that are different shapes. Um, but again, this one little tool, this one little gouge, um, is just going to be what I use to get going. I'm going to start up high, stay away from my center line, but taper from the top down towards the center line. So I'm away here at the top, and I'm going to make a small cut and look at it in the shadow to see if it's where I want it to be. And I'll just deepen that cut. So you can start to see the nostril kind of take form. Before I go too far with that, I want to see what the same kind of cut on the other side looks like. So I'll start making a few there, keeping everything balanced. And that's starting to look pretty cool. So I'm going to continue deepening. Okay. Alright, that's uh, good enough for me. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to come around and shape the edges of the nostril so that the sharp edges kind of go away. cuts right up near the front to really set that nostril area off as being a distinct portion of the anatomy. You can see that taper right there. Same thing on this side, I'm going to cut in right underneath the nostril, scoop up to it. Alright, the top of the nostril area, or top of the nose, top of the muzzle, um, has a, a slight dip to it. And that dip uh, is the valley between the two flares of the nostrils. That's easy enough to, to make. Just going to come in and draw kind of a a little circle, oval really, middle of the top front edge of the nose, just right there. And again, this little gouge, you can come in, make a small cut, look at it, see if it looks the way you want it to, lead up to that cut and then just kind of wrap it around slowly come back up the ridge of the nose getting lighter and lighter shallower and shallower as you go back you can also do that with a pocket knife coming in on the tip on the edge of the blade here scooping in and rounding the blade up pulling, almost sawing back, and rotating the blade as you go. That creates a scalloped cut. Do 
it from the front as well. Yeah, and that creates that ridge area of the nose. Now, I wanted to find this eye socket area a little better. And to do that, I'm going to actually need to take out a good portion underneath this ear. And I'm going to do it on, on a slant. I'm going to leave material here and take that material off. So, making a cut like that. And I really just kind of want that cut to disappear at the end. There. So now you can see right around this area how the head, the shape of the head slopes up to the eye socket. Same thing on this side. I want to really make it look like there's a tube coming up from just below the ear and going out towards the eyes. Finding that there's a few things that are just not quite balanced left to right, so I'm taking out some material here and there. And that's just something you have to, you know, when you're carving, you just have to be aware of where the balance is. And if you see it, who cares if you're on a different step, go ahead and fix it. Yeah, the main is looking a little bit more centered now. Now, I'm going to carry these cuts here back a little further into the cheek area. And this further helps define the, the muzzle and it helps define the eye and it just it helps define the whole muscular structure of the face. So I'm making kind of a shearing cut. Sliding my knife, scalloping it out wherever I can. And where the green changes direction, the cut changes direction on the grain, I have to reverse. I come up here and start to shape the eye socket area so that it blends down into the cheek area. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that.
Yes. Yeah. Now you could do a lot of this again with anything like this little gouge. Um, just following along and creating your paths between the muscles. And it's always easier to use, you know, a scallop shaped tool, a round shaped tool like this than a straight blade and trying to make a straight blade make a round cut. But I show both just because I know a lot of people don't have this tool and they don't want to go buy it or they don't have a way to go buy it easily. So just to show that it can be done a lot of different ways. I do I do that. Same thing on this side that I did on the other side. Just creating uh, scallops between areas of importance. So between the eye socket area and the cheek area. Trying to create a balanced definition there. These are all things that the shadows will pick up and intensify your carving if you do them. Spend the time to to think about them and include them in your carving. Your carving will be much more impactful whenever you're done with it. Right, there's the basic detailing of the night. Now this whole piece will get sanded and then I'll go ahead and part it off of the chuck and then the finishing process will take place from there. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to drop a thumbs up and uh, tell me about what you think about this design of night down in the comments. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. And tell me what kind of night you like the best. There's French Knights, German Knights, there's uh, the Dubrovnik, there's all these different designs out there and this is just my take on carving the knights. So let me know what you'd like to see carved and maybe I'll do a video just on carving knights at some point uh, and carve several different kinds. So anyway, thanks guys and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.